Hello viewers, welcome to this session. Here we are going to learn the interpretation of the poem Luisidas by John Milton. Today we shall discuss the general of the poem, the elegy and pastoral elegy. We shall look at what the poem conveys and also study the style of the poem. Lysidas, published in 1638 by John Milton, is a pastoral elegy written on the death of Edward King, Milton's classmate at Cambridge, who was drowned in the Irish Sea. The introduction of the poem speaks about Milton's reluctance to write at a time when he was preparing to write great poetry. It then speaks about the good times spent by King and Milton at Cambridge. Milton then blames the Nymphs for failing to protect the King. Milton feels he should have enjoyed life rather than dedicate his life to poetry if it is to be cut short like King's life. He is answered by Phoebus that fame is to be found in heaven. Milton also wonders why King, an aspiring priest, had to die when scores of corrupt clergy are alive. He then derives consolation that Lysidas is in heaven. The poem's style is formal with evocative images, alliteration and proper nouns used for effect. John Milton was born in London to a prosperous Puritan parents. He attended St. Paul's School and Christ College, Cambridge. He decided not to take holy orders and to become a poet instead. So he read the classics after leaving Cambridge, when he lived at Horton with his father. It was here that he wrote well-known poems like Allegro, Lysidas. For 20 years after this, till Paradise Lost, Milton produced negligible amount of poetry. He travelled in Italy, France and Switzerland in 1638 and 1639, but returned to England because of the threat of civil war. He spent the next two decades teaching and pamphleteering on behalf of the Puritans. He became Latin secretary to the Cromwell government in 1649 and served till the restoration and started work on Paradise Lost. This was followed by Paradise Regained and Samson Agonistes. His fame rests to a great measure on his epics and epic style, a style which he worked towards from the beginning of his career. Milton went blind in 1652 and remained blind till his death. The fact that he wrote all of his great epics when he was blind is testimony to the skill of the poet. Lysidas first appeared in 1638 in a collection of elegies mostly Latin on Edward King. Edward King was John Milton's classmate at Cambridge. Edward King, who was ordained to be a priest, died in the Irish Sea. The fact gave Milton the opportunity to lament the death of a sincere and good man as compared to the corrupt officers of the church whom he castigates in the poem. Lysidas means the finest piper in Latin. This term is from the Greek poet Theocritus. 
The poem is a combination of Greek paganism and English Christianity. In ancient Greek and Roman literature, elegy denoted any poem written in the elegiac meter which has alternating hexameter and pentameter lines. But the elegy which is a form of lyrical poetry derives its name from the Latin elegia which means to lament. Any poem that laments loss is thus technically an elegy. This kind of definition would include old English poems such as the wanderer and the seafarer in the list of elegies. Since the publication of Lycidas, any formal and sustained lament on the death of a person ending in consolation came to be designated as an elegy. Elegies now refer to only death and not just any loss. P. B. Shelley's Erinaeus on the death of John Keats, Alfred Lord Tennyson's In Memoriam on the death of Arthur Hallam are examples of elegies. Lycidas is not just an elegy but pastoral elegy which is a subtype of elegy. In the pastoral elegy both the mourner and the mount are represented as shepherds. As the Latin word for shepherd is pastoral, this kind of elegy is called pastoral elegy. A pastoral elegy signifies a return to nature. The pastoral elegy harks back to Greek poets Virgil and Theocritus of 2nd BC. There are a few conventions followed by writers of pastoral elegies. They are the lyric speaker begins with invoking the muses and goes on to make frequent references to other figures from classical mythology. All of nature joins in mourning the shepherd's death. The mourner blames the nymphs or other guardians of the dead shepherd with negligence. There is a procession of appropriate mourners. The poet raises questions about the justice of fate or providence and speaks about the corrupt conditions of his times. There are descriptions of various wild flowers brought for the funeral. A closing consolation is provided at the end of the elegy. In Christian elegies, this consolation occurs when the poet suddenly realizes that death is but an entry into a higher world. Other pastoral elegies include Edmund Spencer's Astrophel, written lamenting the death of Sir Philip Sidney, and Matthew Arnold's Thrysis. The first few lines of Lycidas are as much about Milton as about Edward King. As we have seen earlier, Milton wanted to prepare himself to write poetry. He had resolved not to write anything till his poetic powers had matured. He begins the poem by addressing the poetic symbols of laurels and myrtles, telling them he will forcibly pluck their fruits before they are ripe. That is, he will write poetry before his poetic powers have come to fruition. But Milton says the occasion to do so has come, as Lycidas, the finest piper, had died prematurely 
much like the poem. If the poem were not to be written, Lysidas would have died without proper mourning. Milton also hopes that his death too would result in elegies honoring him. Milton recalls the times that he and King spent together. Both of them were fellow students with similar interests. They wrote poems together, liked by their tutor and envied by their fellow students. Milton feels sad that this idyllic situation had to come to an end with King's death. Milton then questions the nymphs who did nothing when the seas swallowed Lysidas. He consoles himself with the story of Calliope. The muse of epic poetry, Calliope could not prevent the death of her own son Orpheus when he was killed by Thracian women who flung his head into the river Hebrews, which later floated on to the island of Lesbos. At this point, Milton digresses, thinking whether it might not have been better to enjoy life like others do, indulging in the pleasures of life, than pursue a life of dedicated service to poetry. Spurred on by the prospect of fame, the poet strives hard only to have his or her life cut cruelly by the fates, like in King's case. Phoebus, the god of poetry, replies that fame is not to be found in earthly recognition but in heaven. Milton reminds himself of the main point of the poem. Now, the gore of the seas, Neptune wants to know how and why the good man, Lysidas the king, was drowned. He questions the gusts of wind and does not get an answer. Then, Hippotides, the gore of the winds, replies that the ship that was drowned was built at an inauspicious time, resulting in its capsizing and in the death of Lysidas the king. The poem then describes the procession of mourners. The University of Cambridge is personified in the river Camus, who is awful as his dearest child is dead. Saint Peter then arrives to mourn the death of Lysidas. According to Milton, Saint Peter feels that King would have been a better clergyman than any of the present corrupt clergymen. All that the clergymen now care about is to fill their bellies. The clergymen have become blind mouths and do not address the problems of their people. Milton then refers to the clergymen who do not lead their flock properly but are only concerned about themselves. Milton also refers to grim wolf with privy paw referring to the predatory nature of the Roman Catholic missionaries. Returning to the main theme of the poem, Milton calls upon various valleys to bring flowers of different hues to be placed on hearts of Lysidas. Milton asks the valleys to bring forth spring flowers, primroses, crotos, jasmines, white and pink pansies, violets, musk roses, with vines and other flowers. Milton suddenly remembers that flowers cannot be put on the hearse as King was drowned at sea. Milton wonders if King's body is near Scotland or Cornwall or any other place. 
But finally, Milton asks his fellow mourners to stop crying, as Lycidas is not dead but in heaven. He may have drowned in sea, but he is just like the sun who sinks into the sea in the evening, but emerges with renewed brightness the next day. Lycidas is blessed by Christ and will lead a heavenly life, partaking in divine pleasures. He will also be the guardian of the seas, protecting everyone in danger. The epilogue, written in a different strain, refers to Milton in the third person as an uncouth swain who has written a poem. Milton says that the writing of the poem is over and he will now embark on a new journey. This last line is interpreted by some critics as Milton's new role as an epic poet and by some as indications of his intended journey to Italy and Greece. The style of the poem is skillfully varied and in keeping with the requirement of thought and emotion. It has a poetical strain of manner that fits its pastoral mood, but it is also bitingly satiric, especially in stanzas where the poet criticizes the clergy. It is passionately exultant. The style varies with the variety of the poem's themes and the poet's moods. The harshly satiric St. Peter passage, the lyrical flower passage, the tragic version of the drowned man in the sea, the severely assured close, all are skillfully varied in style and altogether result in the creation of a varied and dramatic pattern. The style varies, rises and falls in accordance with the fluctuations in Milton's moods. Milton makes skillful uses of poetic devices like alliteration, personifications, similes and metaphors. Alliteration can be noted in expressions like swars stars, sparkly looks and flames in the forehead. The coast lips are personified and described as flowers drooping their heads in a pensive mood. Lysidas being a pastoral poem provides Milton enough scope for the use of evocative images. The poem presents throughout a number of images of water. Cambridge is represented by the river Camus. St. Peter is the pilot of the Galilean lake. Christ is one who walked the waves. The apt use of sonorous proper names not only imparts music and melody, but also dignity and stateliness to the style. Milton used symbolism that is popularized by previous writers of pastoral elegies in the poem. He also used fauns, satires and synonyms. He introduced a new symbol of the Christian shepherd responsible for the souls of men whom he compares to hungry sheep that look up and are not fed. Latin constructions and words in their original Latin sense are frequently used and this imparts epigrammatic terseness, brevity and density to Milton's diction. Metrically, Lycidas is a combination of regularity and freedom. The verse is prevailingly iambic pentameter varied occasionally 
by the introduction of three foot lines. The heroic lines give place from time to time to a short line. Rhymes follow no fixed order. There are neither couplets nor stanzas, but rhymes are variously and flexibly interlaced and occasionally unrhymed lines occur. Echoing sounds are used very well in this poem. It has a rich and sonorous harmony which is sometimes called Miltonic. Death. This theme is all about lamenting someone's death. Everyone and everything seems to be mourning the death of Lysidas. The gods and goddesses, the natural world and of course the speaker. Nature is everywhere in Lysidas. We have got flowers, plants, bodies of water and a few animals. The flora and fauna mourn for Lysidas. It looks as if they could feel the sadness the same we do. The young shepherd Lysidas was an important part of a pastoral English countryside that seems to be nowhere and the poem emphasizes this point. The speaker describes how Lysidas death has affected the natural world which mourns his loss. He resembles Orpheus. The nymphs were not paying attention when Lysidas drowned or rather when the deep took him down. The poet says that nymphs are often associated with particular natural features and here the natural world to a certain extent failed one of its beloved charges. About the sadness, the speaker wishes that Lysidas could hear this elegy or melodious tear. We just can notice that he describes the poem with a reference to water, tear, which is fitting considering that Lysidas met his death at sea. The tear is melodious and it suggests that the speaker is converting grief into art, beauty and poetry. The reader has a feeling that Lysidas would be pleased. When comparing Lysidas to Orpheus, the speaker wants to tell us how much of impact Lysidas death will have. It is a convention of pastoral elegy to describe all of nature mourning for an especially beloved poet. Milton expresses his belief in immortality. Grief and sorrow are temporary and though Lysidas is apparently dead, he has arisen from the dead. Through the dear might of him that walked the waves, Lysidas is in heaven and therefore weep you no more. The saints there entertain him in sweet societies that sing and singing in their glory move. The epilogue brings us back to the portal images again and refers indirectly to the Greek pastoral poets. The conclusion points to a new determination both to face life hopefully and to rise up to greater poetic achievements. Lysidas is one of the last and greatest poems of Milton's youth. It has been compared with the greatest passages of Paradise Lost as the most consummate blending of scholarship and poetry in Milton and in English poetry. It is also described as the poem of a refined humanist 
and an example of supreme perfection of style, imagery and versification. It is often called the high mark of English poetry. One point of criticism against the poem is that it is supposedly an elegy about Edward King but is more concerned with Milton. That is not true. In reality, the poem is about Lysidas more than King. That is, the individual King is extended into a symbolic pastoral character standing for the young man of promise in any context. By doing this, Milton makes King's death more important and the problems faced by it more disturbing. Milton asked the question, how is it that in a world where the wicked prosper and the incompetent get positions of power, the life of a young man who dedicates himself to a life of service to the country and mankind is cut off before he has the opportunity to complete his training and serve mankind. The implications of the king's death therefore are brought about in great detail and they are more significant than just the fact of his death. Moreover, King was not intimate friend of Milton's. They were just fellow students. This accounts for the lack of actual grief in the poem. Milton uses King's death as a starting point from which he can speak about the things he deeply feels about. By writing the elegy in a pastoral mode, Milton successfully brought together his concepts of priesthood and poet in the symbol of the shepherd who cares for his sheep that is the priest and who also creates music that is the poet. Milton thus envisages a protective as well as a creative function for officials who are in responsible positions. Lysidas brings together all the elements that are a part of Milton's life and poetry. A deep belief in religion, puritanism and a hatred of Roman Catholics, sanctity to poetry, respect for tradition, etc. Thus, the poem uniquely blends lament with an indictment of the period and hence turns out to be a lament at the loss of not just a person but a way of life. Though Lysidas is a conventional pastoral elegy which has its origin in the loss of a friend, the poem becomes impersonal and timeless. The elegiac mourning is twice interrupted to invest the personal sorrow with universal significance. This is achieved by making the tragic death of Lysidas as one example of precariousness of existence and the tragic irony of fate which renders all human effort futile. A second theme of equally great concern is the degeneration of the church and the contemporary neglect of the things of the spirit. Lysidas is undoubtedly one of the greatest short poems in English language. Dear viewers, I suppose that you have all enjoyed this session of the poetry where we have seen Lysidas, the king's friend who has been drowned into the sea, has been created a great perspective. Thank you.